Hello dear friends. Today we are going to introduce the concept of definite integral, the second chapter of our book. The need to evaluate areas of planar regions dates back to centuries ago. People wanted to know how much area, how much land they owned, so they needed to calculate these areas. To calculate the areas of planar regions, regions bounded by straight lines is not so difficult. Uh, from antiquity, people used a method called the method of exhaustion to calculate the areas of planar regions bounded not by straight lines, but by curves. Archimedes was the first person to use this method to calculate the area of a disk. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to introduce a function y equals f of x, which is, for the sake of simplicity, we are going to take as positive, and we are going to try to calculate the area of the region R bounded by the graph of F and the X axis between the lines X equals A and X equals B. What we want to do is we want to construct rectangles inside this region R or uh, inscribing or circumscribing this region uh, so that we can get closer and closer to this area. So to this end, what we need to do is we need to divide the interval AB into N subintervals, and we do this by uh, selecting points in, in the interval AB and points in the interval AB, starting with X0 equals A, X1, X2, so on and so forth, and Xn equals B. Now uh, we have N subintervals that you may see on the figure in the right hand side. So now we are going to construct rectangles, but how are we going to do that? Each rectangle, each rectangle will have the base x0, x1, x1, x2. So we are going to call it as delta xi. And they are going to have all, all these rectangles are going to have heights. And these heights will be chosen depending on the value of the point we choose from these uh, from the, from each subinterval. So we want the minimum value of the function and maximum value of the function to construct these rectangles so that the height of the rectangle will be the minimum value of the function or the maximum value of the function for each subinterval. Now we construct the two sums which are very important in the uh, definition of integral. The first one is ln of f which is called the lower Riemann sum, and it's constructed by using the basis of each subinterval and height as the minimum value of the functions. So these MIs uh, will be the minimum values of the function at each subinterval. We are also going to construct another sum, which we are going to call the upper Riemann sum, and this sum is constructed by uh, choosing each subinterval is the base of this rectangle and the height will be the maximum value of the function f at each subinterval. Now, mi, as we mentioned, is the minimum value of the function in each subinterval, the first one, the second one, and capital mi will be the maximum value of the function uh, of the function in each subinterval. Delta x1, delta x2, delta xn will be the lengths of the basis, and in uh, in general, we are going to choose these lengths to be equal. So, how do we get the actual area of the region R? If we increase the numbers we choose in this interval, what we are going to do is we are going to decrease and decrease and decrease the size of uh, sizes of the bases. So the rectangles will be very very small, and in the end which is the case when uh, limit n tends to infinity, will give us the actual area. So the limit of lower sum, lower Riemann sum, let's say, and the limit of upper Riemann sum, if they do exist, will be equal to a number i, which is called the definite integral of the function f of x. Here, a is going to be called the lower limit, b is going to be called the upper limit, f of x is called the integrant, and dx is a differential, which is going to correspond actually to the to this very small length delta xi. Now, uh, although, although we started with the area problem and defined a quantity called i, which is definite integral of a function, they may not be the same thing, and they are actually not the same thing. If we are given a positive function, the graph of which is given by this blue line, the area under it will be the definite integral of the function f of x. Whereas if the function is negative, the definite integral of f of x will actually be the negative value of this area.
So area is always a positive number. We already know that. But the definite integral may be positive or negative depending on what kind of uh, functions we are working with. Now let's take this example. We have a function, piecewise defined function, uh, defined in the interval minus 2 to 3. And <clears throat> the function is defined as... Uh, as a straight line from minus 2 to 0 then as a as an inclined line from minus uh, from 0 to 3 so we have two areas a1 since the function is positive in this uh, in this interval a1 is only uh, the area of a trapezoid which is given by 3 which is quite straightforward to calculate and area 2 is uh, the area of a rectangle uh, sorry triangle and its area is 1 over 2 now the definite integral on the other hand is going to be the sum of these two areas but since a2 in terms of a definite integral will be negative we need to subtract a1 from a2 so in the end we are going to get 3 minus a half and the final result is 5 over 2 uh, which is the required value because it's a definite integral we do not use units Okay, now, uh, if you come to think of it, to find the definite integral of any function, do you always have to construct these lower uh, Riemann and upper Riemann sums? It will be very, very difficult to do it uh, for every function we are given, especially if the function is quite complicated. So we need another method to calculate these definite integrals. Uh, one of the most important and one of the most common theorems that's used in mathematics and mathematical analysis is the fundamental theorem fundamental theorem of calculus this theorem gives us a relation between uh, the integration integral of a function f of x and its derivative the derivative of f of x now let's uh, let us be given a function f continues on an interval a b so uh, let's say we have an antiderivative of f of x. So capital F, the derivative of a function, capital F, let it be equal to our function f of x. The function f is an, capital F, is an antiderivative of the function f. So the fundamental theorem states that if we are trying to integrate the, uh, integrate the function f of x dx in the interval a, b, all we need to do is subtract the upper limit uh, from the lower lower limit using the antiderivative of f which is capital f this tells us this tells us a very simple fact if we know the antiderivative of the integrand integral is quite straightforward let's see all this on an example let us try to find this area uh, of the region r bounded by the curve y equals x squared from 0 to 1 actually it's a very very difficult area to calculate by hand but let's use what we know what we uh, learned from this fundamental theorem now the area we are being asked is uh, the integral of x squared from 0 to 1 the antiderivative of x squared what is the function when you differentiate gives you the x squared it is x cubed over 3 plus c so the antiderivative capital f is x cubed over uh, x cubed over 3 and from the previous theorem, the fundamental theorem, what can we say? We can say that the integral of x squared from 0 to 1 is x cubed over 3. That should be calculated at the lower limit and the upper limit, which gives us 1 over 3 minus 0 over 3. And the final result is 1 over 3 units squared. Uh, we encounter, we uh, in our daily life, we always encounter... This, these concepts for example you want to ca calculate the total cost of a of a commodity you want to produce you want to calculate the total revenue you are going to get from the sales of some certain uh, item all you need is the definite uh, integral of the function you are talking about for example uh, you are traveling uh, with a certain speed velocity and then you want to calculate the total distance you traveled you are going to need the definite integral for, for the last one, we may present an example. Let's say the velocity of our car is two, given by 2t minus 2. t here is the time. So what is the total distance we traveled between time t equals 2 to uh, t equals 4? Uh, if x of t is 
the total distance traveled, then all we need to, this is the position function, by the way, all we need to do is integrate the velocity function, which is 2t minus 2. So in, in our case, t equals 2 and t equals 4 is the interval we are trying to find the total distance we traveled. So what we need to do is just calculate this integral. Now, the antiderivative of t, 2t is t squared, which is quite straightforward. And the antiderivative of minus 2 is minus 2t, which is also absolutely very straightforward. We know this from our first, uh, first, first book, Mathematics 1. So the total distance should be x4 minus x2, which is when you calculate all these things and go and back insert into this function, you are going to find to be 8. So we used uh, integration to find the total distance traveled. Now, uh, we had one function, and we always try to find this area under the graph of this function. What if we have uh, an area like this, the area of a plane region bounded by two curves, call one of them g of x and call the second one f of x. It's, it's still the same thing. Nothing is different. The only thing is we have to subtract the larger function from the smaller function and then integrate from A to B. And that's all. To this end, let us uh, give this example. We have two curves. Well, one of them is a line y equals x and the other is the curve y equals x squared. And I'm interested in this area. Why? Who knows? So what I need to do is just calculate the integral of x minus x squared. Be careful, in this interval, y equals x is always larger than y equals x squared in this interval. Don't forget that. So we have to subtract x from minus x squared, calculate the integral. We need the antiderivative. So the antiderivative of x is x squared. Antiderivative of x squared, we already know, is x cubed over 3. So all we need to do is insert the upper limit of the integral, insert the lower limit of the integral, and in the end, what we get is 1 over 6. So the area we are talking about uh, has quantity 1 over 6. Now, we know how to calculate the average values of finite number of numbers, such as what's the average value of 1 and 2? It's 1 plus 2 over 2. It's 3 over 2, 1 and a half. What's the average value of five numbers? You add them, divide them by five, and you get the average value. The problem is, what if you have a continuous quantity? Or what if you want to calculate the average value, say, say, the temperature throughout the day, at all moments of the day? So, and what next? For example, there is a dam which gives water to your houses, and you'd like to see how the water level changes throughout the year then you are going to need integral. So the average value of a function in the interval a, b, this interval may be time interval or position, uh, whatever. So what you need to do is calculate the in uh, integral of your function. In this case, f of t may denote the temperature or may denote the water level, whatever. So you calculate this interval from a to b, t equals a, let's say, to t equals b, and divide it by the total time, time passed. And you are going to have the average value of your function. So I think that's all for uh, this, this, this lecture. All you need to do is just go. I have skipped many details. You already know this. Please do read your books and try to solve all the questions uh, asked to you. And have a nice day. Bye-bye.